just 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Two, one. One. Yay. That's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm going to talk a little about B row and um, the 10 second rule in B row. So here's how I shoot my B row. I always give my uh, myself 10 seconds. I always take at least 10 seconds of whatever I'm filming at a wedding. Uh, everything I'm filming, if it's the cake, 10 seconds of that. If it's the bride doing her makeup, 10 seconds of that. If it's the if I'm filming, um, you know, the venue, 10 seconds of that. If I'm filming the tables, 10 seconds of that. You get the point. So 10 seconds at least of everything. I mean, you could go more than that, but the minimum um, you want to do is 10 seconds. So the reason why 10 seconds is because 10 seconds is enough for you to use um, doing B-roll. And you can even slow it down to make it 20 seconds. But um, 10 seconds is uh, a good enough time. So when you're filming something, uh, you film it, give yourself at least 10 seconds. Do one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you don't have to count that slow and you don't have to count that quick. But if once you do it a lot, you're gonna know if you have enough footage for you to use on your edit. So don't just go like pow and you're done. Just, you're done. Take a few different shots of the same thing and do 10 seconds of each shot so when you are um, editing you're going to give yourself a few options in uh, the post-production but if you don't um do 10 seconds thank you cricket for shutting up um, can you reach it because I want to do a shot where you take it out and you go walk out this way with them. Okay. So at least always give yourself 10 seconds of footage. So that way you can have um, some time when you're editing. Because if you just do like two seconds, um, I always tell that to people that I'm teaching how to film that come with me at weddings and I'm teaching them how to film. What they do is they always um, film everything real quick. And here's another secret. Here's a, here's a trick that I'm going to give you. It's not a trick. Well, if you do filming a lot, it, it's not a trick to you. But some people like me, I didn't go to film school and all that stuff. I just, I'm self-taught. You know, so here is something. If you're filming the bride and groom and let's say B-roll for the highlights and, you know, maybe the photographer is taking pictures of them and you're filming them. Um, your shots must not always be moving shots you know you, you must not always add movement to a shot this is what I always tell people that I'm teaching how to film because they think every shot has to have some type of movement in it but that's not the case you know sometimes if you're filming stuff for b-roll and let's say they're already moving just position the camera just sit the camera there or not sit the, well you know just put it still and let the action happen right in front of the camera let the you know as long as something is moving a candle you know there's a candle light and it's flickering you know you don't want to move the camera i mean if you want to but you don't always have to have moving shots is my point during bureau you don't always have to you know be moving your camera sometimes just sit your camera there and let whatever is happening happen you know especially like if it's a lot of lights and stuff like that let that happen if it's water running let that happen if the bride and groom are kind of like dancing or you know walking just let it happen sometimes you know you don't always have to have a moving shot and that's my um you know tip to you guys and uh, most people always have the camera moving Especially people that are just getting into film, they think like everything is they have to move everything to make everything cinematic and blah blah blah. But sometimes the best shots are the shots that you just kind of frame it and let the action happen, let the thing happen itself, you know. 
So sometimes it's also where you frame the couple or where you frame your subject that makes it look cinematic. So it's not always a moving shot, you know. So yeah, so that's um, a quick video on 10 seconds of B-roll and why you need 10 seconds of B-roll. So thank you for watching guys and um, make sure you subscribe to my channel and um, give this video a like and um, I really appreciate it you guys watching you know I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers so make sure you guys um, subscribe to my channel and make sure you like this video it's really going to help and motivate me to make more videos when I see more likes because I know like you know I'm helping people. So thank you for watching guys and I really appreciate all the views and all the comments and please yeah you can comment below and add your thoughts on it and you can comment below and tell me what kind of videos you want me to make for you guys but um, I'm going to have a lot of videos coming on gear, on rigs, on gimbals and I also have um, videos that I'm going to be screencasting my uh, desktop showing you guys how I do certain things in the softwares you know Premiere, uh, Final Cut, you know Photoshop and stuff like that so I'm gonna be showing you guys some of that stuff behind the scenes so thank you for watching I really appreciate every subscriber and thank you guys God bless yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Francis knows about the microphone. He's so like nervous to put on the microphone. I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, yeah, I didn't want to touch your baby. <laughs>